This is a follow-up to episode three about designing in public. I'm recording this in March 2020, in the time of coronavirus. A lot of us are working from home, keeping our distance in one way, maybe growing a little closer with others through our digital screens in another way. But we don't have to stop public participation in planning decisions or stop designing collaboratively and interactively. We just need, for now, to use the amazing array of digital tools already available to us and move the process online. For instance, we can stage virtual charrettes, combining quick online collaboration, surveys, polls, building and comparing of scenarios, video conferencing, webcasting. It's a little like the rapid prototyping and feedback process industry's been evolving for decades, but now we're relying on it for city planning. I'm six hours ahead over here, so lots of mornings I produce drawings, designs, and models, and I can send them for review before the crew over there logs on to start their day. That way we can hit the ground running. Some from our office team have been telecommuting for many years now, like James from Budapest. So we're used to this way of working. Hey, good morning, James. How's it going with the morning shift in Budapest? Hey, Victor, it's going very well over here. With collaborations underway with our teammates and clients five or six different time zones apart at any given moment, in our practice, we've grown accustomed to working with a lot of these cool digital tools. But now, the occasion of the COVID-19 outbreak has pushed us to combine these tools anew. And that's one way we're keeping our projects going. There are certainly limitations to online communication, so there will always be a need for in-person events once we can get back together. One of those limitations I call the negative tendency of the internet. We've all seen how not looking folks in the eye when you're saying something or writing something makes it tempting to the less wholesome parts of human nature. So snarky comments, pylons, and trolling can start to accumulate. I've run a little personal social experiment on Facebook and Twitter where I post pretty little photos of the hashtag street of the day or hashtag storefront of the day. And typically each of those draw a few likes, shares, and comments. Check them out. But every once in a while, I post a photo of something really ugly, like a poorly designed street or some sprawl or a blank walled building with the hashtag what not to do. And those immediately get shared a lot more. And some of the comments, well, they might make you blush, unless the comment section of your local newspaper's uh, web postings have already made you numb to that. The antidotes to that tendency toward cynicism or negativity aren't perfect, but they're pretty straightforward. First, brief your participants on the constructive criticism rules for your online brainstorming space. One good rule is, Build up ideas, don't just tear them down. Tell us what you do like and tell us your solutions, not just what you see as problems. Next, give them lots of information. Post resources on the website about the project at hand and refer folks back to those resources as questions arise. Third, there are plenty of nooks and crannies on the internet for anonymity, but this is not one of them. So make it a requirement that for town planning projects, people must post and comment and webcast under their real names. Everybody has to introduce themselves just like you would in the city council chambers or when passing a microphone around in those traditional public meetings at say a school cafeteria. Last, we respond fast, but once. We answer the questions and we clear up misinformation, but we don't get into a never ending back and forth. Right now, Getting together in civic engagement and thinking about your community's future can be a reprieve from the cable TV news. Make the most of it. Use the time to educate and re-ask the question, what do we want our community to be? There's lots of innovation underway right now in this space, and I'm sure we've barely scratched the surface. Future generations may look back and see this decade as a turning point in the whole history of city planning, a time when we made it more relevant and a lot more accessible. Sometime soon, eventually, when we get the all clear to return to in-person public meetings and to go back out into the all-important public realm, we will need to be extra ready to move town planning projects forward and create the places where people want to be. We'll have a local and global economy to rebuild in new and better and more inclusive ways. 
The worlds of real estate and infrastructure and city management will need to be better and smarter too. We'll need strategies for pulling them together and for executing on small and sensible incremental growth projects that add up to real progress. So don't stop envisioning, planning, and collaborating. Just do more of it online. That's lucky number 13 on my list of town planning stuff everyone needs to know. To learn more about how we're using virtual charrettes, video conferencing, and digital collaboration tools, stay tuned to the Dover Coal YouTube channel or come see us at dovercoal.com.